how does one review a film like The Birth of a Nation? Now, quite honestly, before I watched this movie, I honestly didn't know how I was going to review this film. Because mostly, most of the reviews I've seen of this movie um, either fall into one of two categories. The first category is basically people just screaming out, THAT'S RACIST! And the other part, other group of people, would be just people who would kind of, you know, take their monocles, monocles, uh, is that what they're called, monocles, on and off and saying, yes, this film might be a poor portrayal of black people, however, it is a revolution of filmmaking and thus is a great movie. And both of those arguments are very much so correct, but after watching this film for quite a while and watching a lot of white women going oh my god these negroes and a watching a lot of white men scowling in dismay at these negroes taking over the south i slowly realized a slight annoyance i had with the film and i i'll, I'll state it right here i don't like the movie um, but it's not for the reason that you might be thinking of. Now, let's get into the good stuff, because the film is a great movie, you know, objectively speaking, it is an important film for very good reasons. Um, at the first part of the movie, the first quote they, the first quote they throw at you is, um, saying, you know, the, this film has the liberty to show the dark side of the wrong, and the wrong that it's talking about at first seems like the war, you know, the Civil War, and I like the fact that before the war actually happens, and before the epic scope is brought to you, we actually build up the basis of the human relationships. We get to see the family from the North and the South. You know, we get to see how this romance really builds up, and how these little kids will grow up later on in the film. How these family members actually have really close friends. There's a really lengthy introduction, and this introduction actually adds to the tragedy of the war, because friends meet on the battlefield, and they both die right next to each other. We see family members dying. We see sons of, you know, sons of mothers dying. We see women moaning about their lost ones, and it is very effective, mostly because the music and because the war is depicted in such a realistic way. You know, quite frankly, the first half of the film, which mainly focuses on the war, is some of the best early filmmaking I've seen. Um, the war scenes are emotional, they're epic, they're, you know, D.W. Griffith was always really good at capturing scope. You can see this in Broken Blossoms or Intolerance and all that shit. Um, I like that he gave this red color scheme to the whole thing to make it feel more violent. And overall, the war scenes are amazing. And one of the best scenes in the whole film is just the scene where Lincoln gets assassinated. Gets assassinated, you know, he... The way it builds up, and the way it's shot, and the way the people react, and the way it all feels so epic within, like, the scope of the theater, it makes the scene work so well. It just stands out from the filmmaking of the whole film. It's, quite frankly, one of the best things I've seen in film history. It's just really well done. And that's about it when it comes to... The good stuff. And I will admit the scope, you know, the way the film captures scope in the last half of the movie is also really good. But the second half really shows a huge flaw in the flow of the filmmaking. And yes, some of you might be saying, what about the KKK? What about them being depicted as the heroes of the film? And yes, the KKK saves the day. And at this point, I think people should just let that go. I, I, I'm not saying that we should let go of the fact that the KKK are awful people, but the fact that the film depicts as the KKK as heroes. At this point, even if we say that this film is racist or this film is, is a poor portrayal of whatever, whatever, 
the film's not going to change. We can complain forever. The film's not going to change. At this point, we just kind of need to accept that the ending of this movie is going to be what it is. And whether you agree with it or not really won't change the stature of the film. You know, and... And it is admittedly very painfully racist. There's a scene... I did not expect it to go that to that point, but there's a scene where you know, um, you know, the black slaves are free. Now they're free. They can be soldiers. They can be proper citizens. And there's this scene where one of the this this is kind of a spoiler, but it doesn't really matter honestly. Um, there's this white girl. I'm just gonna you know emphasize the fact that she's white. Um, there's this white girl from the south, and she's going out to the well to get some water because, you know, they're thirsty. And then this black soldier comes up to her and tells her that I'm a free man now. I love you. I've been watching you since you were young. I love you so much. Can... Uh, will you marry me? You know, something along those lines. And the girl just slaps the guy and starts running away. So the guy starts to chase her. Now, to a certain extent, Maybe the girl's, girl's scared. Maybe her family told her that black people are dangerous or something along those lines. But as the black guy, you know, chases the girl, the guy says, I'm not going to hurt you. So obviously this guy's an actually good person. Like, she, he actually loves her. But then the girl runs up to a cliff. And then she threatens the guy that she will jump if he comes closer. And the guy's like, don't do that. I love you. And he does come closer. And the girl fucking jumps off the cliff. And she dies. She fucking dies. Because a black guy told her that he loves her. It's just so fucked up. There's... <sighs> but that's... That, that's, that would be enough for Durant. Um, What's the problem of this movie? Well... Yes, is it technologically an important film, and is it revolutionary? Yes, it probably did change a lot of things in mainstream cinema. It is it you know one of at least so it, you know uh, what am I trying to say? Um, yes, it, it it was a revolution in cinema. We get that. That is something that I acknowledge. But the problem of the film, and I really think it comes down to three things. Um, the first thing is that in the second half of the movie, the romance honest, honestly feels very trivial, and it's very unfocused. Suddenly, it's kind of thrown to the side, and, and just suddenly comes back at the end. The romance is just not that, you know, focused enough. It's not built up enough. The first half of the film, you know, dedicated a lot of time to build the basis of this romance, and then the film just throws it away for a while and doesn't build up with build up anything on it, and it just brings it back, but, you know, we, we only have the basis. There's nothing really that we build, uh, build up on that thing. You know, Gone with the Wind is a very good example of how bringing the basis in the beginning and building up that romance to a point where it's such a dynamic you know, plot point, that's a very good example of doing that. The Birth of a Nation, I know, it's an early film, but still, it really fails to bring that romance and make it more third-dimensional, three-dimensional. The second problem is that I don't really feel like the film understands what the main conflict they're trying to bring is. Is it about the restoration of, of the South? Is it about the underlying conflict that exists between the South and, and the North? Or is it about race? Because quite frankly, the film really doesn't know where to focus on it. And it just kind of throws in that race card in your face constantly to just kind of make the lines all blurred, blurry. And it just feels so unfocused yet again. And obviously because they need to focus on that conflict and because they're kind of forcing that conflict into the plot, the romance feels more trivial. The story feels more trivial. The conflict isn't even that focused as well. It's just like forcing cer certain characters to act a silly way, you know? And what I don't really get is this. Yes, the film is racist, 
but it's not consistently racist, which makes the racist parts more weird. You know, the first half, when you watch the first half of the movie, the black, you know, black people are acting like very regular people. They're not violent. They're friendly, even. They're just they're actually some of the more energetic and likable characters in the first half of the movie. And then we just come into the second half and they just become these violent figures who are hungry for power and money. Why? Where did this come from? The film just shoves that characteristics char characteristic in there to force that conflict onto the film. It's just such... A forced move. It's a very forced and unfocused second half. And I don't get how I should be floored by the technological revolution that's going on when the story in itself is really just not... Fo the basics of filmmaking is not being good at all. Yes, the film revolutionized Hollywood and how films are made. But the basics are not done well. That's just... The acting's fine. That's really all there is. The, the other basics, the flow, the cinematography... Well, the cinematography is actually good. You know, the, but the flow and the story. The story is honestly terrible in the second half. And I don't understand why I should respect this film when I don't really respect the basics of it. So... That's my opinion. Quite frankly, I don't really think you need to see this movie unless you're, like, you know, really into film history and how, you know, f films have affected, uh, you know, culture and whatnot. But unless you're into that shit, I really don't think this is worth your time. It's really not that good. Like, yes, it's important, but I'm not sure if it's a good film. That's just me, personally, though. So yeah, The Birth of a Nation, I would probably give it like a 2. A 2 out of 4. That that actually sounds like a very proper rating, at least for my personal opinion, opinions. It's just, it's not that good. I don't get it. So, yeah. The Birth of a Nation, the story sucks. 2 out of 4. Yes, it is racist, but let's get over it at this point, quite frankly. It's just, it's tiring. It's a tiring argument. So, yeah. Bye.